Hi there, and welcome to your weekly top-up of unological nonsense, decanted from my brain, Weinbert, and into yours at the other end of this video. Thank you very much for joining me this week. Now, unfortunately, we aren't celebrating the fact that football came home because it didn't. However, one of the things that we could, we should, and I certainly will be celebrating, is the top quality English wines that we have seen on our doorsteps today. Absolutely fantastic. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Norfolk and I was browsing through this little deli in Wells next to sea and that's where I picked up these cheeses. And contrary to belief, I am not always eating cheese. And the state of this soft blue sticking to the sticking to the wooden board. Mm. And I asked the guy for a recommendation out of his wine collection that he sold. And uh, I asked for his recommendation on as to what he thought was the most sort of exciting uh, wine for me to try. And he recommended this Marsh White from the Burn Valley Vineyard, which is up in North Creek in Norfolk. Their vineyards are approximately four miles from the Norfolk coastline. And on their small parcel, they're growing nine different grape varieties. And I think for me, what they're a sort of shining example of having tried this this evening is the exciting and innovative winemaking and grape growing that's going on in England at the moment. You see, this is made of three different grape varieties. Now, one of which is Saval Blanc. Uh, Saval Blanc is not considered by sort of EU regulations to be a grape variety that produces quality, quality wine. And the reason being is because it's not 100% Vitis vinifera, which is the name of the European vine. In fact, it's a hybrid uh, of that made with another one over in France. Uh, made in France, but now predominantly grown across the whole of England. So it's like they made it just for us um, and ended up doing us a favor for it. The next grape variety is Schonberger which again is a, another crossing here. Schomburger though is a crossing of two Vitis vinifera vines, Pinot Noir and Muscat Hamburg. And unlike the other two varietals that go into making this, Schomburger is red in color or certainly more light red purplish and creates wonderful rosés. And you see Schomburger rosé all across the UK at the moment in England and over in uh, Germany invented over in Geisenheim in Germany, actually. And finally, we have the Pinot Blanc. Pinot Blanc, one of my favorite grape varieties, widely planted across Alsace and Fouts in Germany and, and, and renowned across the world and deservedly so. Now, the three of them, I would never have necessarily thought to have put them together, but I think one of the bonuses of being a, a smaller winery and and, uh, and a smaller set of vineyards is that you get to do this sort of thing, you get to experiment, you get to have fun and I think that is a complete reflection of this wine. It has been, I must admit, one of the most exciting English wines for me to try to date. I think the balance and the harmony of the three grape varieties blended into this one grape, uh, into this one wine is it done exceptionally well. The Saval Blanc has this lovely acidity, as does the Pinot Blanc. They add this sort of nice citrus fruit, fresh green apple, that crisp acidity, and then you have the Schomburger, which just gives it that little bit of weight and sort of adds this tiny punch of tropical fruit alongside the Pinot Blanc, almost sort of like a light chief flavor. And on top of that, there is this tiny back note of pear drop, which is pushed up by this tiny, I say tiny bit of residual. It's off dry, but doesn't necessarily feel off dry because it has that lovely bright level of acidity. And it's just perfectly balanced. I think it's a wonderful wine and at 13.99 is worth more than a punt. Um, you know, even being in the wine industry and, and experiencing English wine and British wine and, and 
you know, often being excited, I'm still always subdued. I find myself sort of taking that step back and not necessarily having a great level of expectation, which I feel, you know, is not justified any longer. That's for sure. Anyway, I would, with the summer coming up, pop this up against, you know, a lovely bit of fish. You could have it with some sort of dressed crab. It's from Norfolk. Why wouldn't you? Also barbecue, but to be perfectly honest with you, just how I'm having it right now, a glass, sit back, enjoy, let it dance across the palate. And the other thing is, is maybe you want to do what I do at the end of an evening, pick up a few little cheeses from the fridge, make sure they've been out of the fridge for a little while first though. You know, I've got this gorgeous blue, which it's standing up against, you know, you have that lovely sort of like bitter, salty, character from the blue little bit ashy but with that nice little bit of residual it's versatile i think you know from a gourmet standard there's a variety of dishes it could stand up against at the same time as not being in the shadow of the dish i'm uh, thoroughly thoroughly pleased with this and thank you very much for your recommendation up in the deli in wells uh yeah, you have, uh, you've massively surprised me and in the most joyous way too. So pop to your local wine merchants, grab yourself some English wine, no matter what it is, because, you know, if you're coming to a place like us, it's hand on heart. And if you're going to a place like this up in Wells, it's the same, you know, you'll trust your wine merchant as much as you know as much as they expect you to trust them and if they carry a level of quality of english wine such as this you're only going to be blown away like i have been have a great weekend cheers and yes football didn't come home but there are plenty of other things that have